and we're live. All right. All right. Hello, amazing fellows. Good evening. Welcome to today's episode of the 3MTT webinar. Hope we all had an, an awesome day. And um, I also hope our evening is going to be as lovely as the day as well. So you're welcome to today's episode of the 3MTT webinar once again. And um, today we are going to be looking at how to land your dream role. We're going to be focusing on LinkedIn optimization, right? So we have with us here an expert who is going to walk us through on how to optimize our LinkedIn so as we can attract recruiters from all organizations we are interested in. So with me on this call today is um, Mr. Olabanji. Mr. Olabanji, please, before you go ahead, I would like you to say hello to the fellows. All right, good afternoon. I hope everyone can hear me loud and clear. My name is Banji Ajoya, and I'm glad to be here. Uh, good enough, I've had an opportunity to engage with fellows. So uh, it's good to be here, and uh, I wish, I I believe we'll have an amazing time together this evening. Thank you, guys. Yeah, all right. Thank you so much. So um, by way of further introduction, I would like to read out the brief bio of Mr. Olabanji before um, he takes the floor. So Mr. Olabanji is a dynamic professional with over five years of experience in building innovative products and designing businesses across multiple sectors, including edtech, health tech, e-commerce, and um, event tech within the B2B domain. Currently, he leads the product and um, programs team at Early Founders Lab, a coding innovation and startup school dedicated to case aged five to 18. So he also leads the product and program team at Early Founders Lab, a coding innovation and startup school dedicated to children aged five to 18 years. He specializes in empowering young minds through the pathway to innovation program where he serves as a dedicated startup coach for kids, fostering creativity, and instilling an entrepreneurial mindset. Wow, what, what a wonderful bio. So guys, please, can we use the, the clapping emoji to appreciate Mr. Olabanji as he takes his blog? Hi, Mr. Olabanji, over to you. All right, yeah. Good evening again, everyone. And um, thank you for the opportunity. So um, I hope the host can give me access to be able to share my screen. If that works. All right, so. All right, uh, can everybody see my screen? Can I get a confirmation? Yes, we can see your screen. All right, all right. So, uh, good evening again, everyone. So. This evening, I would just quickly like to share a few thoughts with us on LinkedIn on how to attract or land our dream role using LinkedIn. So we'll be exploring if uh, uh, we'll be exploring the options right on how to optimize your profile and also attract uh, your job, attract your dream job. Um, just a little background. I understand that a lot of us are fellows. Um, whether you are in the court one, court two, three, or four, uh, you are getting to learn new skills, right? And then um, learning a skill is not just enough, right? So how do you position yourself to be an industry expert? How do you position yourself to learn dream jobs? How do you position yourself as a professional? How do you become a voice within the space or the domain where you currently are, right? So uh, as as said earlier, right? So I'm a product manager. I've done the, I've been in this space for over five years, um, conducted a lot of interviews while we are trying to hire people within that domain as well. So um, whatever it is that I'll be saying this evening, right? 
uh, it's going to help. It's going to help us see some of the things that we need to see and also be able to explore the opportunities that lies ahead of us. So just to start with, right? So I want to ask, the first question here this evening will be, why does LinkedIn matter? Why does LinkedIn matter? Why, why is LinkedIn? Why are we talking LinkedIn, right? So uh, just like we have Facebook, Facebook is said to have a lot of users. I think about 2 billion users, over 2 billion users globally. And then um, LinkedIn is a very unique uh, um, a platform. It has over 1 billion members in more than 200 countries across the world, right? It's 7% of recruiters use LinkedIn to find candidates. I'm giving us this data just to open our mind, right? To be able to see how these things work. About 50 million people use LinkedIn to jump hunt weekly and 73 million organizations are said to be on LinkedIn. 73 million organizations. So the idea is LinkedIn has become an indispensable tool for professionals in all industries today. And whether you are actively searching for a job, whether you are trying to advance your career, whether you are trying to, for whatever it is that you want to do, your LinkedIn profile plays a crucial role in shaping your online presence and also attracting the right opportunities for you. You can't just imagine a space where you have about 75 million organizations, right? And 75 million organizations with 1 billion members. So you have access to network, you have access to meet the right people, you have access to engage with the right uh, audience, especially when it comes to your professional life and your career, right? So link, there are thousands of people who are jumping every day, jumping on available gigs every day on the internet. But the reality is for every job dropped, for every job dropped as a posting, several applications are bound to be concerning qualifications and skill descriptions. So, um, over 1 billion people, 75 million organizations, 50 million people trying to jump on every day. What distinguishes you apart? So you're trying to recruit 10 persons, 100 people apply. Why should I choose you? Why do I need you? Why, sh why should I consider you first? That's the idea. Why should I consider you first? So luckily, the posting on LinkedIn are quite frequent. And depending on your niche or based on your chosen field, you could see about one to five openings per day, according to the statistics from LinkedIn. So what, from whatever domain you are playing in, whether you are a cybersecurity uh, expert, whether you are in product management, you are in product design, you are whatever it is that you've learned, right, within this space of three months for people who have done cohort one or people who are starting um, cohort two currently, for whatever it is that you are learning, whatever it is that you are trying to do, you, you already have, you, you, are, you have a space that you are trying to play in, but you have to be well positioned. So imagine 30,000 people or 10,000 people trying to apply for a job, right? So how do we fit out 10,000 people? How do we fit out 10,000 people? 10,000 people that you can see. So that's the major reason why we are trying to do what we are doing this afternoon, right? So the question is, why do you need this? Why do you need this? So LinkedIn is essentially a tool for personal branding and networking. It's a tool for personal branding and networking, opportunities for career advancement and job searching, right? So LinkedIn is an essential tool for that. Well, personal branding is important, networking is important, and opportunities for career advancement, for job searching. Every professional must have two things. Every professional, write this. If you can write, write this down. And never forget it. Every professional must have Two things. Number one, a platform for visibility and a platform for credibility. What does it mean? A platform for visibility and a platform for credibility. You need both platforms as a professional. You need both platforms as a professional. Visibility platforms are like your social media accounts, like LinkedIn, that we're trying to discuss today, your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitter, or X now. Yeah, so you need that visibility platform. And the credibility platform is what does that credibility mean it simply means beyond all this social media show right what gives credibility to everything so if i google your name now what will come up that's the question if i google your name what should 
what would I see? What topics are you known for to, within the space where you're playing? So for the credibility and well, that 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 will probably be a discussion for another day, but that's why we have our major focus now is on the visibility platform and majorly on LinkedIn today. So in today's competitive job market, right, a strong LinkedIn profile or a strong LinkedIn presence will significantly enhance your career and enhance the prospects and open doors to new opportunities for you. And like we all know, within the ecosystem, especially if you are in this Texas tech ecosystem. Collaboration and networking is key. Collaboration and networking is key. In fact, uh, networking is one of the principal things that you need to have. You need to be able to network and network very well within this space. So collaboration and networking is something you need within this tech space. And today, it is very, very much needed. So understanding that this is how the ecosystem thrives and this is how the ecosystem develops. So I've had the opportunity to tell the fellows who were assigned to us, well, at Elefanas Labs, about networking and why, as a professional within the ecosystem, we need it to survive and to be able to do the things that you also want to do. So how do you attract this visibility and how do you attract the opportunities that you seek, right? So that's what we are looking at today. So we're talking about optimizing your LinkedIn profile. Optimizing your LinkedIn profile. Why would we will start by reviewing and looking at how our profiles should look like and how our profiles can best be tailored to get the visibility and the opportunities that we deserve, that we deserve. So I would like to get a brief from either of these two, from both left and right, which is better? I'd like to get answers from the comments, which is better? Which is better, left or right? All right, so my next slide, which is better, left or right? Of course, why? Why? Well, I know a lot of, a lot of answers would have been dropping on the charts, so but I gave that synopsis you know, just to help us see that to buttress this point that I'm trying to bring up, your profile picture, right, is your first impression on LinkedIn. Your what? Your profile picture is your first impression on LinkedIn. Someone said to me a few months ago that it is only God that sees the inside of the heart. But what men see is what is outside. So what attracts anybody to your profile first? What people see first about you or your profile is your picture, your picture. So to get the attention of any media content in the age where we live in, three seconds is just enough to make a decision. Three seconds is just enough to make a decision. Big giants know this. When I mean big giants, I mean whether it's your Facebook, your Instagram, they all know the kind of content that catches your attention. How many of you have experienced trying to scroll through pages or try to scroll through your feeds or your timeline on your social media, uh, whichever one you like, right? So, and you see these things pop up, you see, and you see a content and somehow you just stop. What catches your attention? Something catches your attention. And how many, how many of you have seen a content and the content does not sound relevant or the content does not make sense? And because it does not make sense, you don't even spend more than three seconds. As you saw it, you just move past it. Just scroll, just scroll. So that is exactly how it is too. Your picture is your first impression. So how can I get the impression of this person? First, the picture has to be attractive. Your picture has to be catchy, right? So your picture is very important on LinkedIn. Then how is it, why is it important? Why is it important and why a pro how should a professional picture on LinkedIn look like? A professional picture is one that builds trust and credibility with potential employers, colleagues, and connections. So you've got to be very, very intentional about your profile picture. Very, very intentional. So you have to choose high quality, professional photo that reflects your personality and your industry. That reflects what? Your personality and your industry. 
So what does your profile picture does? Number one, it creates impression. Impression, impression. So your profile picture is your first, is the first thing people notice about you on LinkedIn. That's the first thing everybody sees. That's the first thing everybody sees. And it has to be very, very simple. You have to avoid using photos that are heavily featured images, right? Or casual snapshots. You can't be sleeping and take a picture or there is too much noise on the background, right? So your picture also has to be personal. You have to choose high quality picture, professional photo that accurately represents you in a positive light, right? And it has to be professionally done depending on the profession or the field or the, the domain where you play. Right, it has to align with that which we also do. So, um, for someone who works in the bank, for example, take Tony Lumi, for example, is is a banker, right? Is a banker, and we don't we don't expect to see Tony Lumi's profile picture and see him on a shirt or on a white polo or in a round polo, just like many of us in tech, right? Because he's a banker, he has to represent that industry, he has to represent that domain. That's professionalism around that space. Right. So very, very important, very, very important to note. So another thing that comes up immediately on your profile is your headline, your headline, your headline. And your headline is like your statements. It's like your branding statement. It's like your elevator pitch. And in just a few words, what, who are you? So when I come on your profile and I see your headline, I can categorically say this is who this person is. I'll be showing you an example in a short while. Your headline is your elevator pitch. It's like you saying something to someone who can't see you, and that person can make a conclusion on you without seeing you. So I don't need to ask who you are. By the time I read your headline, I know who you are exactly. Who you are exactly. So you have to craft a headline that Sausagely showcases your expertise, your experience, and your career aspiration, right? Use keywords that are relevant to your industry or job to improve your profile visibility in search results. So uh, you cannot be a product manager and now go and put something that is not that's when I try to search for product managers, I can I mean probably not find your name. So there are terms, there are technologies. There are some very key words that are used within that space. What are the keywords? What are the relevant keywords that are being used within your domain? You have to find that out and be able to position your profile to look like that. Profile's visibility, right? Your profile needs to be visible. And when someone searches for that particular keyword, whose name pops up? On LinkedIn, there is what we call LinkedIn top voices, right? So when I search for a particular keyword, there are certain people whose voices are heard within that space. Your name has to pop up because the keywords are consistent with what is relevant, with what is relevant. So your headline is one of the most prominent elements of your LinkedIn profile. You have to know that the most prominent elements of your LinkedIn profile and a very compelling one, right? Captures the attention of people who visit your page, it incises them and it pushes them to want to learn more about you, right? It pushes them to want to learn more about you. So it is good to have a perfectly crafted headline. Of course, it's your elevator pitch. It's your elevator pitch. So I have some headline examples here. Um, maybe for example, for a product manager, right? So innovative product manager, driving growth, and customer success with agile strategies. Another person can say, well, for me, I'm a strategic product leader. So depending on what you want, you can, you can Google these things. You can search for them. For some of you, if you have AI that can help you, yeah, you can use those tools. You can, you can craft compelling sort of things that are enticing lines, right? That can capture the attention of people for pets, for any fellow here who is probably in the data and visualization uh, track, right? So data analytics, turning data into actionable insights for informed decision-making. Simple, but you can see some very key words there. You see data, you see insights, and you see decision-making. 
keywords, keywords for cybersecurity and security, cybersecurity and security specialists, right? You see cybersecurity professional safeguarding digital assets with proactive threat detection. So from this headline alone, I can say this is what this person can do. This is so this has to be compelling enough. This has to want you want to know more. This should arouse curiosity. Oh wow, this is fantastic. Let me know more. Let me check more. So it takes the person away from just viewing the very basic page. I want to dig deep into your profile. Right? So web developer, I'm a full stack developer building dynamic web solutions for enhanced user experience. For example, maybe you are in the front end track, right? Crafting seamless web interfaces for optimal user engagement. So these things can be done whichever way you want it, but it has to capture the mind. It, 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 has, it has to capture the, the, the it, has, it has to have the ability to entice people to entice the audience that you want. So how do you craft? So away from the headline, the next thing is your about, your about. So crafting a compelling summary or your about page. So I talked about what's your about page like? What should be on your about page? Number one, on your about page, you have to be able to show passion, show your passion for your work and the skills that you have. What sets you apart from others in your field, right? Expand on your professional background, achievements and aspiration. Achievements and aspiration. I just um, screenshotted um, a particular profile here. Um, this person's name is Blessing Aben, and she's the branding and com she's a branding and communications director. Simple branding and communications, branding and communications. And uh, I will employ you guys to go check out this profile and read about the about. It probably gives you deeper insights into what uh, I'm trying to say. Expand on your professional background. Talk more about your professional background. Talk on your achievements. What have you been able to achieve? Sometimes, even for many of us who probably may not have worked within this space or you don't have much experience, um, maybe deeper work experience as regards to what you've learned so far, you can as well, right? from the things you've done in the past, you can find a way to craft it such that the things you've done in the past still has a way of resonating with what you currently do, even at the moment, and craft something very uh, uh, compelling, right? So what are the tips? Here are some tips that I think will help you, right? Start with a compelling hook. Capture the attention with a strong opening statement that highlights your unique value proposition or professional passion, right? Highlight key achievements. Very important. Highlight key achievements. Summarize your most significant achievements and experiences in concise and engaging manner. Highlight your key achievement. Showcase your skill and expertise. Emphasize on your core competence. That thing that you know how to do. Even if you just learn it, say it in a way that people want, people are curious to know more. Be very confident about it. You know, there's a way you write. And um, your confidence from the writing, I know that this person is not confident. Be confident in it. Be confident. Be confident. So summarize your most significant accomplishments, right? Emphasize on your core competence. Show your areas of expertise. Let your target audience know this, right? Inject personality. Don't be afraid to infuse your personality into your summary to make it more relatable. You know, some of us will just go to chat GPT now, right? And uh, tech HBT, just copy and paste. There is no edit. There is no, you know, it is now easy to really know what AI has written and what human beings write these days. Because many of us have not really studied that engineering and um, that uh, was uh, 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 the engineering and where you, you understand how to, to structure um, the keywords to us, right? So many of us, we need to make it very personal. So even when you use AI tool to be to write this thing, ensure that you go over it again. Put in your own words. Express yourself from inside out. Right. Include keywords. Right. Include keywords in it. Include keywords. Keep it concise. Aim for brevity while ensuring you convey information that piques your reader's interest. And ideally, keep your summary between three to five paragraphs. If it's too lengthy, people don't have time. 
to read lengthy stuff. Keep it concise. Then focus on the future. Discuss your career aspirations, your goals. Demonstrate your ambition. Drive for professional growth. And end with a call action. Encourage people. Encourage people who visit your page. Provide visitors to connect with you. Reach out for opportunities. And if you have a website, of course, put in your website. Put in your website. Yeah, so highlighting your expertise. Highlighting your expertise. So how do you highlight your expertise? Detail your professional journey, right? Concise and impactful descriptions of your roles and achievements. So highlight key projects. So what are the things you've done in the past? Highlight your key projects, your responsibilities, where you've worked before, your accomplishments, and demonstrate your expertise. For example, say you are in the field of product management. What product have you tried to manage before? What are the, which team did you lead to build those products? I like your achievement. So we did this. We took it from ideation to market. I like the achievement. Give it figures. Give it words. Use actionable verbs, quantifiable results to effectively communicate your contributions. To effectively contribute your contribution. So I, I also did a sample here. I got a sample here for, okay, so I may be a little bit biased. I'm a product manager. So I got a product manager's profile. Um, this profile is Toby Otokite. I think she's the founder of Product Dive. You can go check it out. You can see the way she highlighted her skills, the things she has done, the things she did while she was holding these positions. And she also showcased the experiences. So when it comes to your experience section, think of it as your professional story. That's one thing I want you to get. Think of it as your professional story. Think of it as your story that is being said or that another person is reading, right? So detail your career journey with concise description of your roles and accomplishments. So while you were on X, Y, Z job, what were the things that you did? Actionable. What were the things that you did? Concise. Highlight projects and achievements. Showcase your expertise, right? And use verbs like, I led so, so thing. I did so, so thing. I implemented so, so, so thing. I achieved to demonstrate, I achieved so, so thing. Just to demonstrate the impact you had on the thing, right? So, especially when uh, within the tech space where collaboration is one of the very key things. Collaboration is very key. So, people you work with, your ability to also show that you can collaborate and also work with others is also an, a very important skill that um, recruiters are looking at for uh, uh, these days within this space. So that leads me to the skill session. The skill session, you also have skills, right? There are skills that you, you have. You, you, you have to be able to also let us know or let your audience know what the competent skills, whether technical, whether non-technical, that you have that can help you attract the right people, right? So list your core competence and technical skills relevant to your field, relevant to your domain. Prioritize skills based on their importance to your target roles and industry. So at the back of your mind, begin to ask yourself, what kind of jobs do I want to land? What is that dream job you have at the back of your mind? What are the core competence skills that is needed for that job? Ask yourself, do I have those skills? If you don't have it, simply go and get them. Simply learn the skills, right? To be able to get the kind of roles you are looking for. And when you have those skills, don't be shy to put it up there. Don't omit it out. Put your skills there. Showcase your skills so that you can attract the target audience. Then seek endorsement from colleagues. Seek endorsement. We'll, we'll, we'll get there to seek endorsement from colleagues. So look at this sample. Right, like I said, I'm a product manager. Sorry, I'm biased. Um, look at the skills that this person in the product space had had product leadership, and you can see the places where these skills have been have been explored by this person. So there are facts. So while I was here, these were the skills that I had. While I was here, these were the skills that was that I displayed. These were the skills that I learned. These were the things I learned on the job, right? So products, management, strategic thinking, 
can be things that you have as a product manager, right? So showcase your top skills. Prioritize listing your core competencies and technical skills relevant to your field. Make sure you use the keywords. And please get endorsement from colleagues and supervisors. You've done something very amazing. A skill, something you did amazingly well with where you currently work or where you work in the past. And it's a skill that you need for your next level. Tell people who are giving you credit. Don't just allow people to give you audio credit. Tell them, go and endorse my skills. Endorse my skills, right? So you have a supervisor, you have a colleague, endorse your skills. So regularly update your skill session to also be able to get you to do that. So demonstrate your qualifications, of course. Your education section, I like your academic background as well. I like your highest level of education, degrees, institution, where you, where um the, the, the certifications that you also had, right? So highlight, highlight that, highlight that. So your certifications, you've done a special certification. You've finished TDMTT, put it there, let people know. I got this skill from so, 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 please. This is the certification. I was, I was, I was part of this. I did this, I did this. These were the certifications. It's very, very important. Very, very important. Seek for recommendations, right? Seek recommendations. Let people recommend you. Let people recommend your skills. Let people give feedback on your skills. Let people give feedback. And like I said the other time, endorsement is very, very key. Engage with your network by endorsing their skills, which often leads to reciprocation. Endorse other people's skills too. Prioritize skill endorsement, right? Based on their relevance to your target rules and industry. So endorsements are other another valuable feature they validate your skills actually they validate your expertise so prioritize skill endorsement based on your relevance to your career goals so expanding your network very important i told i mentioned it earlier that net uh, networking is one key thing that you cannot do without within this ecosystem so connecting with industry professionals right connect with professionals in your industry including colleagues industry leaders, recruiters. In fact, let me let, let me highlight this very well. If you are really looking for jobs, mm, if you want to land those dream jobs, go out on your LinkedIn profile, find recruiters, connect with them. When they put out job applications, you are more, you are more at a better chance of seeing them early. Connect with them. So connect with colleagues, connect with industry leaders, but as well, connect with recruiters. Personal connection requests with a brief message expressing your interest. Join relevant LinkedIn groups and participate in discussions to expand your network and also stay updated on industry trends, especially within your space. So engagement with content. Yes, we'll be doing a lot of this short after this webinar. Maybe we'll start in three days. We'll be having a 21 days challenge just to make this um, entire process uh, more practical, right? So uh, engage with posts, articles, updates. So you did something new. You created something. They talk about you. Nobody will sing your song for you. Raise your alarm. Let the world see what you've done. Let the world see your work. There is no professional that is hiding behind shadows. You have to be seen. You have to be heard. Showcase your work, share insightful content, right? Share your own expertise. You've done a project, tell it to the world, let them see, let the world see what you've done. So show your own expertise through thought leadership posts, articles. You wrote an article, put it on LinkedIn, let people see it, right? Establish your credibility to attract engagement. Establish your what? Your credibility to attract engagement. Engage with content from your network as well. Like, comment, share, post is a great way to stay visible and build relationships, right? So don't forget to share. So it's not the day your recruiter posts something. That's the day you go to the person's DM and say, ah, I'm so, so person. I'm looking for a job. If you have them in your connection, engage with their post. Out of sight is out of mind. When you show up on people's um, uh, uh, content as well, you come to their mind. Sometimes they don't even need to put out the job. They just message you privately and send you a DM or something and say, okay, we have a job, bro. We have an opening here. 
Is this something you feel you can do? Right? And the conversation just goes on from there. So don't forget to share your own expertise through thought leadership content to establish your own credibility. So finding your own dream job, right? Finding your own dream job. So there's a LinkedIn um, feature for job search, right? So use the advanced job search to filter or narrow down your job listing based on your criteria, based on location, based on industry, right? Experience level, safe preferred searches and set up job alerts. So you are a product manager, set up alerts for product roles so that when those things drop, in fact, you can do it in such a way that you get emails, right, on these jobs. And let me tell you something. Why trying to jump hunt? Go and get something we call rejection. So you can have a bucket list of rejection, right? So that consistently you don't give up because you are tired. You give up because you are done, right? So ensure that you don't stop. Someone said the day you stop, that's the day you kill the chances of ever winning. So you have to keep showing up. You have to for and for every job you apply, a new experience is built in you. A new way to do it is built. Um, a new approach. And for every job you are looking for, ensure that your skill, the skills needed for that job is being tailored to the skills that you have. If you need to revamp your CV for just that job, you have to be very, very intentional. So even for the jobs that you have on LinkedIn, some will require you to still submit your um your your not just your profile now, but also your C CV or your resume. So you will need that, and you have to be intentional about it. But for job, there are jobs, and there will always be jobs, and that's the truth. There will always be jobs. So explore the job uh, job listing feature recommended based on your profile and your activity. So LinkedIn jobs search functionality offers powerful tools to help you find your dream job so setting up job alerts right so you can set up job alerts you can adjust notification settings to receive alerts via email via linkedin via... so you can do this you can set up job alerts so that you don't miss out on this so for people who also have the ability to explore or you have um good money to explore the premium benefits the premium feature of LinkedIn. So it's it's fantastic if you can afford it. It's very, very fantastic. You have more chances of landing your dream jobs. You have more chances. So there's on the premium, on the premium level, at the premium level, there's what we call email, right? LinkedIn premium offers email credits, allowing you to message anyone on LinkedIn, even if you are not connected with them. So you see a recruiter trying to help, right? All you need to do is go under the profile. Connect with the person. You can even reach out to the recruiter saying, because in reality, the world is not built for timid, timid people. You have to be bold. You have to be able to um, go after what you want. So use this email, right, to reach out to recruiters or hiring managers or industry professionals to directly, professionals directly to inquire about job opportunities or networks from them. And to also help you, there is what we call LinkedIn learning. So the most education, you can also use it to also improve your skills, right? To also improve your skills. So in trying to stay relevant, in trying to stay relevant, you need to consistently show up. And that is one of the reasons why we'll be having the 21 days LinkedIn challenge. So regularly update your LinkedIn profile with new experiences, right? If you got a new experience, you change the job, you got a new job, let us know showcase it you have a new skill there's something new you just learned let the world see you have accomplishment there are things you've done in the past that but you kept them hidden so many a times you don't know the many of many sides of you that people are actually looking for so bring your entirety into it bring your entire being into it bring your many sides to the table let the world see who you are and if there's any recent project you've gotten, show it, stay relevant, showcase your recent project, showcase your certifications, showcase your achievement, and showcase your ongoing growth and development. Keep your headline and summary up to date. What who you were yesterday is not who you will be tomorrow. So when you get to your tomorrow, let your tomorrow be consistent with what you have. 
or who you are at the moment. So keep your headline and your summary of the date and act, let it accurately represent your current career goals and aspiration. Correct career goals and aspiration. I really wish we still have more time to be able to delve deep into this, but I think um I will have to bring it to a close from here. I just hope I have been able to make um a few cents in 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 this presentation. So uh, of course you can also connect with me on LinkedIn. Yeah, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. That's my LinkedIn name, Ola Banja Jiboye. So you can connect and then uh, you can also um get more together. So thank you and um I think that should be the end. Yeah. Thank you guys. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Olabanji. Yes, you've really done a lot. Like the section was quite insightful and it was value packed. Uh, I'm very, very sure that our notepads are filled with a lot of salient points from this um math work train um lecture. You know, LinkedIn is one of the tools people usually find difficult to use because of how professional it is. But today, you've, you've really gone into details to explain a lot of things. And I'm sure that the fellows, they got value. They got value. So thank you very much for that. So before our speaker leaves, I know that um, we have a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions to ask because the session was very, very amazing, very wonderful. So we can't let the speaker go without um, taking our questions please if you have any question do well to to drop it at the comment section i will be reading it out for the speaker and the speaker will do justice to all our questions please try as much as possible to ask all your questions and uh, we will do well to respond to all of them Justina, you're currently muted. Okay. All right. So let me take the question again. As a starter without experience yet, how do you go about it? So you talked about us um filling out our experiences and also highlighting our achievements. So for someone who is just starting out in any career field or on any path, and the person doesn't have any experience and achievement yet, how can the person go? about that all right so uh let me let me first of all ask or put it this way i'm not sure there's anybody without any kind of experience maybe what we are trying to say is that maybe your experience may not be relevant to what you currently want to do at the moment but everybody has at least one bit of experience you must have volunteered somewhere somewhere before you must have done something before right even if you have not worked in a proper company, and that's why we also encourage you sometimes um, volunteering can also help. Volunteering can help you build a little bit of um, track, right? So, but just to answer the question, for people who have not started, you have to get something new. For example, if there is a personal project, some an idea came to you, put that idea down, work on it. If uh, okay, for example, for people in the data analytics space, right, it's not difficult. Get, you don't have an experience yet, don't worry. Put your contents together. Find data sets. Analyze those data sets. Share insights on those data sets, right? Put it together in a project. I don't know if many of us here know how to use tools like uh, uh, Git. Uh, share share your Git Git or uh, and links. Put it out there. People need to find something that you must have done before. Nobody has to be hiding. So, and why you are trying to engage, why you are trying to, that's why we talked about engagement. If you don't have anything yet, ensure that you have content that you are constantly putting out there just to showcase the skills that you have. So, if you don't have the experience, you must have the context. So, let the content now bring you to a place where you can get the experience but you cannot sit on the fence and not have food. So get 
get the get if you don't have the experience, get the content. Get something in your hands to do. You don't have a job yet. You don't have an internship to you find a way to start putting things together on your own. Share your experiences as you do that. So sometimes it is not about the job. It is about who you are also becoming to while you have not gotten that job. So for example, even when you get a job or you apply for a job on LinkedIn, right? You apply for a job on LinkedIn. There can still be a way whereby um, you can still lose out on the job even when you are invited for an interview if you don't have a track of what you have been doing with your hand. So somebody just wants to know. So we know you've not gotten a job. You know you've been doing this. So within this within the space of this time and this time, what have you actually been doing with your time? So, and when recruiters also find you, when they go to your timeline, what do they find you doing? What do they see? So you may not have the experience, but you have the knowledge. So um, if you don't have the experience, but you have the knowledge, showcase the knowledge. Package the knowledge and put it out there. So, but you cannot have both. So you don't have the experience, package the knowledge and put it out there. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, that did. Yeah, it was well answered. Thank you so much. So um, volunteering is the right way to start gathering your skills, your experiences. So you don't necessarily need to work with any multinational company before you can have um, the experience needed for you to go all out on LinkedIn or any other social media platform. Thank you so much for that. So um, the second question I have here is related to the open to work feature on LinkedIn. So you know your LinkedIn, when you put a profile picture, there is um, usually an option that asks you to use the open to work feature. So a fellow is asking if it is good to use open to work picture as um, your profile on LinkedIn. Hi, did you get that? Oh, sorry, come again, please. I think I lost you for a minute. Okay, so um, a fellow is asking if it is good to use the open to work feature as um a profile picture on LinkedIn. The open to work feature, is it good to use it as your profile on um LinkedIn? Okay, yes. Um depending on what level you are, right? If you are open to network. It's fine. I think LinkedIn created that badge just to show that we really want it. But for me, my own personal bias, I think I don't like it. So it's fine if it if it works. It works. It has worked for a lot of people. Uh, for me, I don't just find it very. This is personal bias, right? So I don't just find it very effective for me. Um, it takes intentionality to connect with the people you need to connect to. It takes intentionality to get the job you want to get. It's not just about, I want to network. In fact, for so many people that I know personally, once they see that badge, um, the truth is, go and look at every professional that you want to see out there and check if they really have that badge on their profile. Maybe it will probably help. People, LinkedIn put it there. And it's fine. So if it works for you, fine. But for me, I think my own small little bias. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for doing justice to that question. Uh, we'll be going over to the third question. And a fellow is also ask, asking you if, um, as someone who is into tech and also into fashion designing, if it's possible for him or her to be updating the LinkedIn profile. Is it possible for someone into fashion designing and tech as well to be updating LinkedIn profile? All right. So, brilliant, brilliant question. Let me start by tech. Let me start by saying, in reality, tech is not an industry, right? Tech is just an enabler of industry. Tech in its on its own is not an industry, and that is why when you bring tech to finance, it's called fintech. When you bring it to health, it's called health tech. You bring it to education, it's called health tech. So there are many sides of you. You do fashion, and yet you are in tech. 
bring that many sides of you to the game. Yes, you are a this, 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 and you are also this. In fact, um, my boss, Mr. David Ogunshola, used to tell me that the God did not create only full stop. So full stop is not the only punctuation mark we have, right? So we have a comma. So that means you can be more than one thing. You can be a product manager and also be something else. You are not being bossed. You can't be bossed. And for many of us, we cannot be one thing. So you can <laughs> both be this and also be this. You can both be a product manager and also be a community manager. Two different roles, right? So you can be a fashion, uh, you can be a fashionista, you can be someone in the fashion space and also be a tech person. Yes, it is possible. Bring your entire person to the game. The day someone who is in the fashion space needs you and they need a combination of someone with fashion with the fashion idea plus tech, you are the one to look out for. So it's good that you can have both. So um bring both your tech and your fashion to the same line. Like when you are creating your content, find a way to sync that content, that's your fashion end with the text end. Blend it together, then you create another industry, probably for yourself. So I think it works. And there are people who are actually looking for you still within that space. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you so much. Um, so the next question here is what about those who are starting building a brand? How can they put out their brand on LinkedIn? So for those who are starting their Okay, please, can you come again with the question? What about those who are starting building a brand? How can you put out your brand on LinkedIn? For those who are just starting up with um a brand or a business, how can they go all out on LinkedIn with this brand they are building? Yes. Number one, if you are building a brand, there are two things. You have the business itself and you have the person behind the brand. And when you are starting out, the business itself as a brand may not become, uh, may not be all that will go out. You need the person behind the brand. If you are the person behind the brand, right, or if you are the brand, you need to tell that story. People believe people behind the brand, not just the brand. So if you are pushing your brand, if your brand is new on LinkedIn, fine. Be consistent. Let the brand messaging capture what you are doing. Let it capture the needs of the audience or your customer or people who you are trying to target, right? But as the person behind the brand, you have to consistently, not just make noise now, consistently show up talking about what you do and where you are doing it. Are you getting it? So you have to consistently show up. Consistency is the key here. Consistency is the key. So you have to consistently show up. You have to consistently be in the faces of people. So and I think it is very, very important to do that. So consistency is key, and you have to get that. I think, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, it did. Thank you so much for doing justice to that question. So we have um three more questions to go. So one is like um it is similar to a question you've already addressed, but I would still like you to reiterate the point. Maybe the person just joined. So the question is someone with zero experience, like me as a data science beginner, how do I go about updating experience on my LinkedIn? Okay, so now ask yourself. In the previous role that you have been before, what did you do? Because it's just not ideal for you to be on LinkedIn without at least one experience. Even if it's a volunteer, even if it's volunteering that you did, you volunteered for an organization, you did something in this space, put it there. All you need to now ask yourself is, that thing that I do, how can I bring it to bear? How does it sync with where I am currently? There is no, there is nothing in your past that cannot be synced with what you currently do. There has to be, there has to be a meeting point. Do you understand? There has to be a meeting point. There has to be a connection. So find a way to connect that which you've done before. So you are new in this space. Bring it together. 
but you can I, I don't think it's it's reasonable for you to just have a dry experience or that you've not done anything before. Even if it's a group of people that you led in school, you were class manager for three weeks, you did a little bit of data, you call co you collected social lists together, and you try to find people who were these, were these, were these in class. And like I said earlier, gather now that you now understand some very deep facts, or maybe um uh, to a large extent, you now have knowledge about data analysis or data and visualization, gather data sets at your free time, analyze this data, put it out there, put it out there, let talk story, say something about it, let people engage um, uh, that post, let people find meaning to it. In the end, you discover that if, if, if you do it so well, it is DMs you'll be getting. People will be the one trying to reach out to you. People will be the one because they see your content and they see reasons to connect with your content. And I hope that helps. Yeah, it does. It does. It does help very well. Okay, so um, thank you very much for also answering that question. Um, we have a very wonderful question next. So, you know, AI is all over the place and um, it's changing the way things are done in various organizations, in various sectors and industries. And someone is asking, how can we make use of chat GPT to have access to more information while trying to update our LinkedIn profile? Yes, okay, so I think what we answered that, why, on, why we are, why we'll be doing this 23 days challenge because we also understand that um it doesn't have to stop at just this webinar and there has to be a practical end to it where we really get to understand how these things work and um they say it takes like 21 days to form a new habit according to research so and that's why we wanted to do it for 21 days and see how it works i think many of these questions will be answered because um daily too will be dropping um uh We'll be dropping AI prompts, right, for ChatGPT that you can use to get um the contents that you want, right. So we we'll bring in all that. We will be, I think, at that point, your questions. Uh, if you join the challenge, I think it will, it will help dissolve uh, that particular question. All right, that response was awesome. Thank you so much. So we'll be taking the last question for this webinar. And um, the last question is, I did about 30 courses on UNITA program. Should I put all Should I put all of them on my LinkedIn page? So all these 30 courses that I did on my UNITA program, should I put all the courses on LinkedIn, on my LinkedIn page? Well, uh, for the courses, you may not have... Now, look at the courses. Ask yourself, which of these courses really resonates with the kind of with the, the with with your new profession, with what you are trying to build, right? Which connects more. You don't need to just pack um it's good. We all see plenty of certifications, but and they are not very, very relevant. You have to ask yourself which of these things, many ends of me, is really relevant to where I want to be, to how I want to be seen, to where I want to be positioned. Right. So uh, you may have thirty education, but all the thirty education does not have anything to connect or has anything to connect with you or where you are going. Right. So you need to you need to look at that. too. So you may not have to put all the thirty connections. You have to ask yourself in this industry, which connections matter or which certifications matter. And I think those are the ones then which of these certifications or these certificates that I have resonates with what. I am doing. So it allows you, you may not have to put all the text. And it may just look like you are just packing dots. Uh, so look for the one that's much more relevant. Okay, thank you. That was awesome too. So thank you so much to our dear speaker. Um, 
you've been amazing on today's episode of the 3MTT webinar. And um, for sure, you've given to us for free what many people pay a huge sum of money to learn. And we are grateful. Please, the fellows, let's appreciate the speaker um, at the comment section. You can drop an emoji to appreciate him. He has been awesome and he has opened the door of knowledge to us. And I'm sure that um, at the end of this webinar, we are all going to start um, leveraging LinkedIn to land our dream job so before we end the call today i would like to um lay more, more emphasis on what the speaker said about the 21 day linkedin show up challenge so we don't just want this section to be practice and to be theory only theory aspect only but we want to go as far as making it more practical so we've decided to close out this um section or the cohort one fellows with a 21 day LinkedIn show up challenge, right? So this challenge is going to start on Friday, the 19th day of April, 2024, and it's going to end on the 9th of May, 2024. So um, we, we have the alumni telegram group for all the cohort one fellows. So further information as regards this task is going to be communicated in that group. So if you are not yet on the Telegram group for the cohort one fellows, please do well to locate your um, to locate the Telegram group and join. So you have to participate in this 21 day LinkedIn because there is going to be a lot of prizes to be won for those who will be consistent and committed to this task. But remember, this task is for your own good, not for the speaker's good, right? So it's just a way of helping you to um practice what we've talked about in today's webinar. So I encourage everyone to be part of this um, LinkedIn optimization for visibility, fostering, professional growth and um, job. And also it's going to serve as an avenue for you to network with recruiters and every other person in the same career path with you on LinkedIn. So having said that, thank you everyone for staying till the end of today's webinar. My name is Justina Mukede, and I'm the 3MTT Community Manager for Abia State. It was nice connecting with everyone on this call. See you some other day. See you then. Enjoy your evening. Thank you so much.